Welcome along to your first video tutorial where you're going to be learning how to create vector artworks in Adobe Illustrator. Now before we do get stuck into creating our own artworks, I just want to give you a quick rundown on the two different types of images that you will generally see on a computer or mobile device. And they are vector images and raster images. Okay, so the main difference between the two is the quality of the images. Vector images, the ones we're going to be working with this term, are images that never lose quality. So you can zoom in as far as you can on these images, you can resize them as big as you want, you can even save them multiple times, and they are never going to lose quality. You'll usually um, see vectors in cartoon or clip art kind of styles. You don't usually see them as photos as such. So this is what a vector image would pretty much look like. Now a raster image, on the other hand, over on the right hand side here, sometimes called a bitmap image, is made up of pixels. And if you zoom in on these images, you will see that they become a bit pixelated and you can start to see the pixels that make up the image. If you save them multiple times or enlarge them, the same thing will happen. They will lose quality and you will start to see it become pixelated. Okay, so we use raster images mainly for photos and we usually use a program like Photoshop to edit those images. But in this course, we're going to be looking at vector images in Adobe Illustrator. Okay, so you can see that there are some huge benefits to using vectors and a lot of people use them for things like logo design so you can stretch them out and put them on billboards or you can have them nice and small on for example business cards okay also really handy for artworks like um, advertising flyers that you see hanging up around um, shops and in the main streets of town okay so let's get started on creating our first vector image in illustrator this is what we're going to be making today. We're going to be making some clouds in the sky. It's a very simple start, but remember this is your first video tutorial, so we need to start somewhere just to get some basic skills under our belt. And as the term goes on, you'll notice that our artworks do become more complex, and you will be creating some pretty cool stuff by the end of the term. All right, so to get started in Illustrator, open it up, and you will be greeted by a screen that looks similar to this. It'll be slightly different on your machine, but similar. And I want you to click on the new file button here on the left hand side. When you click the new file button, a box comes up asking you what sizes you would like to use for your document. We're actually going to use a template. So if you go across the top here to the web templates, and we're going to choose this one here called minimum. So it's 1024 width by 768 pixels. And as soon as you click on that, it populates all the boxes with the required stuff and you can click on create and once you click on create you've got an empty canvas here it's called an artboard ready for you to draw on so the first thing I'm going to draw onto our artboard today is the blue color for the sky and the way I'm going to do that is simply use a rectangle so in your toolbox on the left hand side here head down to the one two three or the fifth tool down and you'll see you've got a rectangle tool just Pick that, and then over the right hand side in your properties panel, you should be able to see the appearance. If you can't see that appearance, just go to window and select appearance, and you'll be able to change the fill and the stroke colors. The fill colors, that's the inside color of the shape. So if you click on that little white box, you've either got this little screen here, so you've got some different swatches that you can choose to pick your color. I'm gonna choose this fluoro blue for now. And beneath that, you've got the stroke, which is the border of the shape. Okay, I don't want a black um, border on my rectangle, so I'm just going to click on that little box that's black and hit the first color, which is the white box with the red line through it, which means we've just removed the stroke. Okay, so once you've got that fluoro blue selected, I want you to hover around that top left hand corner until you see the word intersect appear in pink writing and then click and drag to the bottom right corner and just drop it once you see the word intersect appear in the bottom right corner. And that will draw for you a nice big blue rectangle that fills up the entire artboard. Now it's a little bit fluoro for my liking this blue, so you can go back over to this fill color here. And instead of playing with the swatches, which are these little um, square color blocks, you can hit the little um, color mixer icon here and you can move these sliders around just to tone that blue down a bit. So I'm just going to make it a little bit darker and a little bit 
lighter as well, something like that I'm happy with. So just look for a blue that's not quite as vibrant as that fluoro blue we originally had. Okay, so once you've got that um, sky in place, what I like to do is go to my Layers panel next, which is also over here on the right-hand side. I'll just bring it out for a sec so you can see it a bit easier. Now, with your Layers panel, if you can't see that, again, go to your Window menu and select Layers. What I'm going to do is just expand Layer 1 so you can see this rectangle down here. And I'm going to get you to lock that layer into place by hitting this empty little square next to the eye. The eye is your visibility, so if you want to hide that background, you can press the eye and it will disappear. Press it again and it comes back. So next to that is the um, where you can toggle the lock. So we can now lock this background into place, meaning we can't pick it up, we can't resize it, we can't do anything to it. It's locked into place. If you want to unlock it, you just press that padlock again, and you can move it around and you can resize it if you want. Okay, I don't want any of those things, so I'm just going to put it back to where it was and lock it. And that means we can now draw on top of this background um, some other bits and pieces for our artwork. Okay, so let's have a go at drawing the first cloud. first way I'm going to draw a cloud is actually with this rectangle tool again. I'm not going to use the ellipse tool, which is circle tool, just yet. So with the rectangle tool selected, go over to your fill color and change it to pure white. So I'm just going to go back to my swatches and select white. And I'm going to draw myself a rectangle on the screen, roughly that size. Now, with that selected, I'm going to go back and grab my um, selection tool here, the black arrow from my toolbox. And these little four circles you can see just inside each corner of the rectangle, if you click on one of them and drag towards the center of the rectangle, you'll see that it rounds the corners off. So we've now got ourselves a rounded rectangle. Okay, so that's the start of our first cloud. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some white circles on top of this. And we're just going to overlap these white circles to make it look like a chunky or a bulky cloud. Now to get the circle tool up, you need to go over to where your rectangle tool is and hold your left mouse button down on it. A sub menu will come up and we want to select the ellipse tool. And I'm simply going to hold shift and start drawing a circle on the page by clicking and dragging my mouse. Now I'm going to click and drag a few circles out. Um, oops. A few big and a few small. And then I'm going to grab my um, selection tool and just move them so they overlap one another. Okay, so you can start to see this cloud coming together. It looks like I probably need to draw one more circle over here. Now, if you don't hold shift, you can draw a circle in any old shape like so. If you hold shift, though, while you're drawing a circle, it makes a perfectly round circle like so. Okay, each side's in proportion. So it's up to you how you're drawing your circles. But I like to hold shift when I draw mine. Okay, so it's just going to take a little bit of fiddling now just to get your circles in the right spot to make this look like a reasonably good cloud, but I reckon that looks pretty good. When you are happy with your cloud, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to join all these circles together that we used, or in the rectangle, to create this shape. And the way I do that is just click and drag over the top of it, so I've highlighted all the different shapes. You can see them there now. And you've got this tool over here, um, I'll scroll down a bit, called the Pathfinder tool. If you can't see it, again, go to your Window menu and select Pathfinder. And from the Pathfinder menu there, with all these selected, we click the first option, which is called Unite. And what that does is just combines all those shapes into one big shape. Okay, so now we've got a cloud. Now one thing we can do here to make this cloud look a little bit more realistic is add a shadow behind it. So what I'm going to do here is just click on the cloud. There's a couple of ways you can do this. You can just go to Edit and Copy, and then Edit and Paste. You've now got two clouds. The other way I like to do it is I hold Alt on my computer and simply click and drag off that cloud, and you've got a duplicate copy of that cloud. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to hold Alt, and we're going to hold Shift once we start moving it. And that kind of locks where you can move it. I'm going to move it diagonally to the right and only ever so slightly just off the original cloud. So it's going to look like that. I've got one cloud behind and then one cloud in front. 
Now the cloud in front with it selected, I'm going to change its fill color to pure black like so. I'm then going to drop the opacity here down from 100% to 10%. The opacity is just the transparency of the shape. Okay, so if you want your shape really transparent, make that percentage nice and low. If you want to have your shape barely see through, then you want that opacity um, value higher. But I'm looking for somewhere around 10% at the moment because I don't want to really see this cloud. It is going to be a shadow. Now that's still not right, doesn't look perfect. So what I'm going to do next is just right click my mouse on this um, black cloud. Well, it's a gray cloud now. I'm going to go down to Arrange and Send Backward. That will send it behind the white cloud. And you can now just see that black cloud coming in just behind the white one. And that creates that shadowy effect. So that's our first cloud done. It would be a good idea to highlight both of those shapes now. Right click on them and group them together. So they're now one big shape and you can pick it up, move it around. You can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, do what you want with it. Okay, remember it's a vector shape, so you can resize it all you want. It's never going to lose quality. So that's one way to make a cloud. A second way to make a cloud is by using the ellipse tool again. Uh, I'm going to change my fill color back to white. And I'm just going to draw a bunch of circles and overlap them. I'm going to keep them relatively similar in size. Use my selection tool now to move these guys around. Um, doesn't look too bad actually. A little bit smaller, I reckon. It'll start to look pretty good. There we go. So there's another cloud simply just overlapping different sized circles. Now, what we're going to do here is the same as what we did before. We're going to highlight this cloud. Go to Pathfinder and choose the first option to unite those shapes. Makes them all one big cloud. Um, I'm then going to hold the Alt key and click on that cloud and drag off it. If you hold Shift as well, it helps. And you can just pull it off a little bit to the bottom right and change that fill color to black. Okay, remember we're making a shadow here. So with this black cloud selected, we're going to drop the opacity from 100% down to 10%. And finally, just right click on that cloud, arrange it, and send it to the back. Oops, I shouldn't have sent it to the back. Sorry, I was meant to send backward. So let's try that again. Arrange, and then send backward. That just puts it behind that white section. It's probably a little bit too far off, so I might just nudge it back up a little bit with my arrow keys, and that looks pretty good. So there's two different clouds right there. I'm just going to right click on this last cloud and right, yeah, go to group. Okay, so there we go. We've got two pretty nice looking clouds drawn into the sky. Your job to finish off with is to draw me two more that look a little bit different from the ones you've already done. Don't forget the shadow on each of them and make them look as realistic as possible. Now when you're finished, uh, you've got two ways you can save it. If you think you'll come back to it and uh, re-edit this image, then you can just go to Save As and save it on your computer as an Adobe Illustrator or an AI file. Alternatively, if you think you are finished, there's a few ways to save it, but probably the easiest is to export it for the screens. Or you can go to export as and choose whatever different file type you would save it as. So probably PNG would be the best here. Um, and that's basically it. So make two more clouds for me, save it up, and you have finished your first tutorial or your first vector artwork in Adobe Illustrator. I'll catch you in the next video where we'll start to draw something a little bit harder.